Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Seabed. They fixed my swimsuit, Taco gave her map a careful look before inspecting the island through the crack in the trunk. I can see the cliff from here so I feel we're close. I think we can go a bit further and hide from the rain in the cave. Ooh, good idea. That's a good idea. Thick foliage protected us from most of the rain, but a few cold drops still snuck through, falling on my neck. I go press forward, pushing fern leaves out of her way. Ugh. Stumbled on the root of a green moss-covered tree, but I caught her from behind. Look where you go, jeez. Thanks. Continued forward, fighting the leaves in our way. Are you sure we're going in the right direction? I think it's just over there. I followed her gaze. Almost completely hidden by the surrounding greenery of moss and fern trees, we came upon a cave entrance. How did you even find us? Find this. Huh, come on. I go jump down from the rocky upper ground we were on and extended her hand toward me. I slowly climbed down as well, but my foot slipped on the wet surface. I fell straight into Takago's arms. Oh, you're so soft. Oh, cut it out. Aw. As we descended into the cave, now protected by its sturdy roof, the sound of the rain grew more distant. It's a lot more spacious than I thought. I could hear the sound of dripping water from somewhere. I noticed countless tunnels in all shapes and sizes a bit further down. They ranged from small enough that one could squeeze through them, to ones you could even drive a car through. Formed a complex layout like weathered lava stones. Taco shot a few quick glances around the vicinity as she pressed forward. There's something else you wanted to show me. There'd be some fireflies here. You mean glowworms? That's what I was told. You wanted to see them, right? Wait, glowworms or fireflies? The puddle of water right where she was stepping. There's fireflies in caves? I could go wait. What? What sank into the water? I was trying to tell you to be careful. Damn. There were countless gashes on the rocks we were walking on, and some of them were filled with translucent water. Few seemed deep enough to swallow you whole. The road into the cave was leading further and further down below. I can barely see anything anymore. Now that's more like it. Dangerous, I think we should turn back. Let's just go a little further. Akago's voice reverberated across the countless tunnels, growing too garbled for me to make out. Huh. Did you say something? I stopped and looked at her. Look! There seems to be light above a large black rock uh, further down. I could see a few trees and a patch of white sky through a hole in the rock wall. A stream of water trickled down into the cave, splashing down like a waterfall into the pond it made below. Feeling sparkling. Ago pointed at the many blue lights above us. As a storm cloud drifted over the hole in the wall, the cave momentarily fell dark, making the light stand out even more. They look like stars. I wish I brought my camera. I doubt we ever forget this, even without a picture. Well, and then, uh... And then you forget when you're older. And good if you don't. Got out of the cave and after tra traversing the woods again, found ourselves on the beach we had originally started out from. To walk closely behind Taco, we left a trail of footprints that made it seem like some four-legged animal had been prowling along the beach. But the waves soon washed them away. It was a beast. You think the twilight looks so vivid because the air here is clear of clear pollution? I gaze at the violet sea in the marmalade colored sky stretching above it. The refreshing breeze flew toward the west, leaving little wavelets in its wake. Mm-hmm. I go raise both her arms as she stretched. I have to mindly gaze at Takago's marmalade colored back and the violet sea while trying to hold down my hair in the wind. Takago's twin tails painted uh, circles in the air as she turned her head. Her face lit up in joy as she spotted something and cheerfully trotted toward it. Ah. Uh, what, more crabs? There was a tilted palm in the direction she was walking. An idyllic looking tree with its roots stretched all across the green carpet around it. Its sturdy trunk stretched all the way to the white sand while the leaves shuddered in sync with the waves. Huh. I go jumped down the trunk and began ascending it. The view is great from here. I wonder if it got tilted by the wind. 
The tree would shake with her every step as she balanced herself with outstretched arms. Don't come crying to me if you fall down. I got this. Then she said that her sandal slipped, sending her face first into the sand below. I fell. I can see that, you idiot. What were you going to do if you got hurt? I'm sorry. I handed Taco her sandal as she was patting the sand off her butt. Let's hurry back. Hmm. Yeah. Took her hand and turned back to the direction we came from. Or maybe they are together. Or maybe this is actually the present time. So confuzzled. Can't, can't, can't believe I have to keep babysitting you even in a place like this. Taco kept her eyes on the palm as we walked. Wasn't there a picture of a palm tree above the wa wash basin at the place we used to live at? Was there? The horizon began taking, taking an indigo hue. Now they mentioned it, I think there was some postcard there, yes? I kept imagining what the real thing would look like as I washed my face. But now that you've seen it, how do you feel? Logic. I see. I, a white sea fowl flew off into the distance toward the sea. An odd feeling being on an island that not a single other person lives on. If our boat doesn't show up tomorrow, the world will have two more missing persons cases. Didn't we watch a movie like that back in school? Ah, that brings back memories. Remind me, what did the protagonist eat to survive? Andy crabs and clams before he crafted hunting equipment. Ah, uh, Well, we didn't meet that pesky little crab earlier. Say we should find it and cook it for dinner. Think you could recognize it? I, I memorized its face. What kind of face does a crab have? One with dim, uncomprehending eyes. I don't think you can tell them apart with just with that. <laughs> crab ruined the fun time. Yep, she wants to eat it. This place is full of fish and fruit too. I bet we could live like queens if we really wanted to. Being able to let our hairs down at a place like this is nice from time to time, but it'd be the end of us the moment we got sick, of, sick or hurt. Yeah, you really wouldn't want to get sick here. There's no bath around. I can build one for you. Take cold water so you have to collect firewood every day. Fair thing. Oh. Okay. I stepped under the pieces of coal scattered across the ground, crushing them into pieces before finally mixing them with the sand. Having finished tidying up after dinner, I picked up the empty can and returned to our water cottage. Hmm. The wharf, it looked like a lighthouse shining atop the black sea. Its light extended along the water, sparkling in consort with the waves. I opened the door to see Taco cleaning the wire netting with a brush in the kitchen. Putting the can back to its place, I opened the curtains and laid down on the bed. Turned on my side and closed my eyes for a few seconds until the springs of the bed creaked. Oh. I felt Takago's breath, who seemed to have finished her cleaning, tickle my neck. A moment passed and her lips pressed against it. Ooh. What's with this all of a sudden? Yeah, we could do it when we get got back. Do do, do it? Do, do what? Do, do what? Do what? I go put me closer to her, placing one of her hands on my while sneaking the other under my clothes, trailing along my belly. Can if you insist, but are you sure we can dirty the sheets here? Oh. Okay. Hmm. And. And the question was yes. They could dirty the sheets, it seems. I sat up, parted the current slightly, and stepped outside. Where are you going? I go who had been sleeping until now reached out to me. I want some air. Wait for me. I turned away from Takago and stepped outside onto the terrace. Huh. Sat down, making myself comfortable on the wooden beach chair covered by a striped cloth. Crossing my hands on my belly, I gazed up into the sky. The Milky Way stretched before my eyes, beautiful enough to make me feel like I was looking at a photo album. 
The stars littering the surface of the dark azure's waves sparkled like a collage of tiny gems. Gonna catch a code if you sleep here. That's who. That's who. But anyways, I'm going to end the episode here, everybody. It seems like they had some um fun, sexy time. Hmm. So uh, yeah, the bit of fun they had. So we'll see what uh they're doing out here in the next episode. So if you guys enjoyed this, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you, everybody, for watching this episode, and you will hear me in the next one. Bye.